Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Fabrizi, and I am a GIS analyst for Duquesne Light. And today, I will be talking about how we leverage the Esri mobile applications for our PUC INM program. So who is Duquesne Light? Duquesne Light Company is a leader in the transmission and distribution of electric energy, offering superior customer service and reliability to more than half a million customers in southwestern Pennsylvania. From the industrial age to the technology era, Duquesne Light has been an integral part of the fabric of Pittsburgh and the surrounding area. Its dedicated employees have helped transform the way people live, delivering dependable energy for greater comfort and leisure, faster communications, more efficient transportation, enhanced economic development, and improved health care for virtually every facet of life. The company can trace its history back to 1880, when a small group of Pittsburgh business leaders pulled $90,000 to form the area's first electric utility called Allegheny County Light. Leading the way in the development of the electric light and power industry, the company helped prove that alternating current is superior to direct current which allowed electricity to become commercially viable. An ongoing upgrade of the metering infrastructure is putting more information in the hands of customers, enabling them to make more informed decisions about their energy consumption. As a next generation energy company, Duquesne Light is committed to more than keeping the lights on. It powers the moments in customers' lives. So who is the PUC and what do they do? PUC stands for Public Utility Commission. The mission of the Pennsylvania PUC is to balance the needs of consumers and utilities, ensure safe and reliable utility service at reasonable rates, protect the public interest, educate consumers to make independent and informed utility choices, further economic development, and foster new technologies and competitive markets in an environmentally sound manner. Specific to electric utilities, they regulate the electric distribution rates, ensure service reliability and infrastructure integrity, and foster the development of competitive electricity markets. The PUC also participates in matters that impact the wholesale energy market. The Inspection and Maintenance Program, or INM, was created to ensure that Duquesne Light in all utilities conducts preventative maintenance to identify areas that could potentially affect the reliability and safety of the company's assets. In accordance with our biennial inspection, maintenance, repair, and replacement plan submitted with the PUC, Duquesne Light inspects all of our 230,000 assets with varying cycles spanning two to eight years. In 2012, Duquesne Light started recording their inspections using GIS. Due to new state regulated deadlines at the time, paper forms would no longer be sufficient. The mapping department turned to ArcPad and eventually ArcMobile. Our field workers were not tech savvy and were reluctant to walk away from their paper forms, but they were not aware of the analysis side that the data they collected every day. ArcPad and ArcMobile both provided adequate information to run reports, but we were still dealing with inconsistent data and in including or inconsistent data, including spelling errors, miscalculations, and over-reporting using too many fields. We also had a frequent turnover in employee status, causing us to miss deadlines because we had to train new workers in the middle of an inspection cycle. Not that the interface was difficult for us in the office, but it wasn't necessarily user-friendly for our field crews. We also brought in contractors that use their own collection devices and software causing us to store multiple forms of data in multiple locations. In the beginning, our collection devices were not supported by our IT department. The Yuma devices were purchased and maintained by the mapping department, device maintenance not being our specialty. All of this would give the false impression to our business customers that we didn't know what we were doing. In 2017, it was decided that a new process needed to be implemented for the upcoming inspection year. The goal was to create a streamlined, user-friendly process. The GIS group had already started utilizing Collector for ArcGIS for other projects, a great mapping tool with the ability to take maps offline in sync when reconnected to the network. But the collection form was limited on 
customizations. While researching of how we can make Collector work for us, we learned of Survey123 and its ability to be integrated with Collector. With its easy to use form design using Microsoft Excel, we can now combine smart forms with an easy to use mapping app. So what do I mean when I say smart survey? If I was working on a smart device, I would hope that it would do some thinking for me, right? That's what Survey123 did for us. For the sake of our inspection forms, auto-populating data is used to minimize time spent at each location and improve accuracy of the data collected. That auto-populated data includes attributes being pulled from the asset and collector, adding in the date, calculations based on previously entered data, and default inputs. We can also control the user interface to provide all necessary reporting data, including required fields, only displaying questions that are relevant, and built-in photo questions requiring specific pictures. All of our PUC inspection forms are built using existing feature services from our enterprise database. Using this design, we're able to easily upload the fields to build a customized inspection form that will sync back into the SDE database. Our GIS group is growing, giving us an opportunity to properly support our inspection group, which includes having IT support us and the devices used in the field. And now I will demonstrate how we use Collector and Survey123 together and background scripting to ensure the most accurate data is collected. Shown here is a sample of our pool inspection map. The employee uses the location finder or the search tool to locate the pole to be inspected. He identifies the pole and verifies that the attributes are correct. Once verified, he clicks the inspect pole link to open the survey. As soon as the form is open, you will notice some of the attributes are already populated. The inspection date is auto-filled with today's date, the poll ID and the municipality, both of which came from the collector map, and having the poll ID auto-populate ensures that the correct ID is entered. This is crucial because to run reports, we frequently need to join back to the poll using a unique identifier. If there is an error while typing the number, that will cause an incorrect join. Finally, the coordinates are also filled in. Our current version of Survey123 prevents us from using the poll's coordinates so instead, the tablet's location is pre-populated. At the bottom of the form, the inspector can use their tablet to take the required photos, or they can upload in the office. The upload has been used more often because they can use a better quality camera to take more detailed photos of an issue. Another nice feature of Survey123 is that they can send their survey while they are out in the field, if they are connected to our network. This is useful for when an emergent repair is needed. But depending on their location, that isn't always possible. So they can choose send later, which saves it in their outbox to revisit when back in the office or connected to the network. A couple other fun things I learned while building inspection forms in Survey123 are first, being able to hide portions of the form that might not be applicable to the particular asset. This survey has two different types of inspections, IR and visual. There is a different equipment list for each inspection type, which will never be used in the same inspection. So the user selects what type of inspection to get the list that he needs. Also, the number of hotspots is only visible during an IR inspection. Another fun feature is autocomplete. This is great for long lists, especially lists not in any order. The user can type in part of what they are looking for, and the field will narrow down the possibilities containing what they entered. For example, shown here are five municipalities with north in it, and I can guarantee this list of 500 municipalities is not in alphabetical order, but by typing in just part of the word, a smaller selection set is presented. We can also QC their data to prevent any calculation error by using formulas to auto-calculate. For instance, the temperature rise in the first clip 
is calculated by subtracting the object temperature from the reference temperature. And in the second clip, the days between inspection dates is calculated as soon as both date fields are filled in. Our inspectors use touchscreen tablets, enabling them to use the number keypad built into the survey for some questions instead of having to open the default keyboard. Microsoft Excel will always be the go-to reporting output because it can be widely used for internal and external business users. But as our GIS department grows, we are focusing more on using Esri dashboards, web apps, and most recently, combining the dashboards and web apps into one using Experience Builder, all of which provide interactive user capabilities. Finally, Duquesne Light is currently working with Schneider Electric to build a data model and working towards being the first electric utility to go live with the utility network. Because of the new data model, we will be implementing a new mobile app mapping tool called ArcFM Mobile. This will replace Collector, but the field workers will still have the same process, selecting the asset to view its attributes and clicking the link to open the inspection survey in the Survey123 with some of the pre-populated data. In the upcoming year, we are looking to work with our inspection groups to see how we can improve their GIS experience by listening to their feedback. We feel this is an important step to help the office workers to understand what happens in the field and for the field workers to understand what we do in the office. Please feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any questions or would like more information on how to utilize these apps in your daily workflows.